sais pas s'il faut que je lance mes verres. <rire> 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 Ça fait vraiment longtemps que je n'étais pas venu à Montréal. Je pense que ça fait plus qu'un an et demi, deux ans. Je suis très content d'être de retour. Euh, je vais vous parler ce soir de WearCamp. Je suis content de voir que l'expression mode plus austère est de plus en plus répandue. Euh, WearCamp Montréal, qui est-ce qui a déjà entendu parler de WearCamp? Wow, wow. Okay, j'ai juste cinq minutes. Euh, WearCamp, ça existe euh, depuis plusieurs années. Euh, le premier WordCamp où j'ai eu la chance d'aller, c'était en 2008 chez Google. Euh, c'est organisé par les gens, moi j'appelle ça les géocurieux. Donc, euh, tous les gens qui sont intéressés par les technologies autour de la cartographie, de la, lo de la localisation. Euh, si vous connaissez l'expression d'un camp, euh, on n'est pas obligé de faire du camping à WordCamp, mais ce bilan en 2008, il y avait des temps de Google avec « I'm feeling lucky on the side <rire> ». Euh, comment ça marche un WordCamp? C'est un open space, donc c'est vraiment un événement qui est fait par les gens qui sont présents. Quand on commence la journée, on fait une grosse grille sur le mur et avec des post-it, les gens vont présenter les sujets qu'ils veulent parler dans la journée. Donc ça peut être très très diversifié un WordCamp. Euh, par exemple, il y a beaucoup de packages open source euh, qui sont autour de la géographie comme MapNIC, comme euh, les gens qui font Push ID, Crisis Mapping, les gens de OpenStreetMap. Euh, donc il y a plein de projets open source puis il y a plein de de, de packages commerciaux aussi qui ont des euh, qui travaillent avec des développeurs. Donc, euh, c'est pour ça qu'on voit des gens comme Google, Simple Geo ou autre. Euh, bien sûr, si on fait un, un, un Wear Camp, il ben, faut faire une map de la conférence. <rire> euh, ça, c'est le premier sujet que j'avais proposé en 2008, c'était euh, Start One in Your City. Okay, si tu en fais un, un Wear Camp, l'idée c'était d'en partir un. Bien entendu, vu que je l'ai proposé, j'ai été obligé de le faire. <rire> fait qu'il y a le premier WordCamp euh, en 2009 à Montréal. Euh, merci à Wayback Machine pour avoir regardé les archives de mon vieux wiki qui était bosté. Euh, <rire> cette année, ce qui est le fun, c'est qu'on le fait en collaboration, encore une fois, avec la conférence géomatique, qui est une conférence euh, plus formelle euh, des géographies, euh, avec plein de gens du gouvernement, euh, des, des vendors aussi. Et puis, euh, on le fait aussi avec OSGO, qui est l'organisation euh, de géomatique open source euh, au Québec, OSGO Québec. Euh, à la première fois, on était peut-être comme 12-15 personnes. Euh, Michael était là. Euh, il y avait une couple euh, que vous connaissez peut-être, Pierre-Luc, qui était dans mon Python aussi pas mal. Euh, Simon, Simon là. Euh, et puis, pour donner une idée des sujets qu'on avait présentés, euh, on a parlé de mettre des places dans les activités suivantes. Ça, c'était Evan Podromou qui parlait de StatusNet. Euh, augmented Reality, Geospatial Business Intelligence, GIS in the Cloud. Euh, etc., etc. Et puis, euh, ben, ça, 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 ça ressemble à ça un WordCamp. Fait que ça peut ressembler à ça. Des fois, il y a des sujets qui sont plutôt euh, sérieux euh, dans une petite salle. C'est très courant aussi dans un WordCamp de séparer en plusieurs tracks. Donc, on peut avoir 25 personnes. Ici, il y a trois personnes qui ont vraiment envie de parler de comment on fait du rendering de tile avec MapNIC. Ils vont en parler ensemble. C'est bien correct que c'est trop long parle et que les autres trouvent que. Ils ont hâte que le code soit réussi pour qu'on puisse l'utiliser. Euh, un autre sujet, euh, cette année, euh, quand je suis allé au WordCamp euh, qui était à, à, à Stanford cette année, euh, on parle beaucoup de Geo puis de médias sociaux. Donc, euh, moi, j'ai animé une track sur Twitter Geo. Donc, comment travailler avec la géolocalisation dans Twitter avec euh, un Australien vraiment sympathique de Transmap euh, qui, a fait un, qui a fait un mapping, qui nous montrait comment il faisait du mapping des, des tendances. Ce qui est cool aussi à WordCamp, c'est que c'est une place pour faire des hacks. Donc, il y a plein de hacks extérieurs. Si on a la chance euh, d'avoir un espace, comme là, c'est des gens qui faisaient euh, de la cartographie aérienne avec des ballons. Euh, il, y a, il, y a, il y a plusieurs... Euh, ça, ça a pris comme une heure ou deux pour trouver comment lancer un ballon en basse altitude avec des slingshots. Ou, euh, après qu'on a trouvé comment faire ça, euh, on a pris des photos et puis il y avait des gens qui travaillent sur des logiciels open source pour faire le stitching automatique des différentes tailles. Donc, ça permet de faire du mapping euh, sans avoir des satellites nécessairement là, ou un Google Street Car. Euh, euh, dernier truc que je veux vous parler, euh, ce qui est le fun aussi, c'est de faire des lightning talks. Donc, on prend des cinq minutes. Les on va prendre une, une période où tout le monde est ensemble. Puis euh, là, on va faire des lightning talks. Les gens vont parler soit de leur projet sur lequel ils travaillent ou soit un projet sur lequel ils aimeraient travailler pour trouver des gens pour contribuer. Euh, 
Euh, il y a souvent des hacks days ou des hack nights avec les WordCamp. Euh, cette année, on n'en a pas organisé, euh, puisque ça fait longtemps qu'on n'avait pas fait un moral, mais je pense que si la tradition prend, euh, j'aimerais bien que l'année prochaine, on puisse faire une session de hacking autour des données géographiques. Bien entendu, il y a toujours de la bière après un WordCamp, euh, comme après un Montréal Python. Euh, donc, si vous voulez vous inscrire, euh, vous pouvez aller soit sur wordcamp.ca ou sur la page Evan Bright. Euh, c'est gratuit. Euh, c'est euh, le 11 octobre, de la, dans l'après-midi. Il y a après ça, il y a un 5 à 7 au Benelux. Euh, et le lendemain, il y a la conférence géomatique de 2001. Des questions? Merci.
Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we're not asking for a change in the privacy laws. Really, just data that uh, could already be public to make it public in an open data, uh, open format. And in Canada specifically, um, it started at the municipal level. Uh, open data, different countries, different situations. First city in Canada to do was uh, Nanaimo, BC, 2008, followed by Vancouver, Toronto, a whole bunch more in 2010. We're up to about 10 or 11 cities in Canada that have a formal open data policy. Uh, there's no city in Quebec that has an open data policy, um, and we're hoping that Montreal will be the first one. And the rumors are that we'll have something this fall. Uh, we'll have an open data portal and policy this fall with an initial set of data sets. And obviously over time, they'll be adding data sets a quick map of what's happened uh, in Canada so far. Just jump in any time. Um, so, <laughs> um, so why are we doing this? I mean, Montreal has a ton of data, everything from uh, the déneigement to your budget to, um, to, to you know, hockey rink status to restaurant inspections to uh, road construction. There's no shortage of data. Right now, the vast majority is locked up, hard to reach. Uh, and really the reason we want to get this out of the city's proprietary COBOL databases uh, is so that we can improve the quality of life for all Montrealers. Uh, we all love to enjoy the city, and if we have access to the data, we believe you'll uh, take advantage of the services the city offers and help improve the city. So this is our website, montrealgouvernet.net. Um, pretty straightforward, a lot of our blog, lots of information if you want to keep track of us. We're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, we have an email newsletter. Um, so we're not, we're not hard to find. From the start, uh, so it's a citizen's initiative. I think Mike might have mentioned at the beginning. Uh, citizen's initiative basically means we have no legal status. Uh, we're really just four guys that were fed up with the situation in Montreal. We saw what, else, what was happening across Canada and around the world. And we said to ourselves, you know, for Montreal, which has so many developers, so many students, so many really uh, bright, creative people, why isn't this happening here? And we put this group together in August. And from the start, we decided to get a collaborative approach with the city. We didn't want to be on voulait pas être revendicateur with the petit with like uh, avec des pétitions devant la mairie, uh, just asking for stuff and like give us, give us, give us. It's ours. We really tried to take a collaborative approach, reaching out to people inside the city administration that were uh, des fonctionnaires who were already uh, working on this issue for many years, but hit administrative roadblocks. And by demonstrating to the higher ups in the city, uh, both political and administrative, that the citizens wanted this and were ready to work with the city, uh, we were able to kind of get through some of those roadblocks that the internal people had been facing for many years. And that's something that, like, we were prepared to be more aggressive, but we, we decided to start with a collaborative approach, and it worked out very well. Exactly. So far. So far, yeah. And uh, one of the first things we did was have uh, uh, public meetings, the Hong Kong Public. So we launched in August, on August 8th, 2010. And on August 23rd, 2010, we had our first public meeting where about 75, 60 to 75 people came. These were fonctionnaires, developers, uh, regular citizens, uh, designers, and they came and we met and we um, really got a better understanding of the situation in Montreal. Um, we've had two other public meetings since, uh, as well as two hackathons. Uh, this has led to a lot of press. We've been covering basically every press outlet uh, in, in the province and in Montreal. We've worked with a lot of developers over the last year to build different apps that we're going to show you uh, very, very soon. And these apps collectively, along with our own site, uh, have gotten over 125,000 views in the past year, um, nearly a million page views, we have about 780 Twitter followers, 567 Facebook, our cloud score is really high, we're very proud of that. What's, what's great is for the apps, all the developers that made those apps were happy to promote open data and web Bell on those applications, so there was a, a chance for use of the applications to get informed. Exactly. Um, and so we had two hackathons so far. We're going to have another one this fall. We'll be announcing the date shortly. The second one was at the Nauman House, which, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is a fantastic uh, space on Sherbrooke and uh, Clark for startups and for the tech community to really um, uh, collaborate around projects. So our second hackathon was there uh, right at the opening of the Nauman House last uh, February. Open data, uh, sorry, I'm talking really quick. We don't have much time. <laughs> Open data is a bit of a, for non-developers or, or non-data uh, people, um, it's a bit of a nebulous idea. It's like a lot of the people at the city, the, especially administrative, the political, they're like data, what's, you know, who cares about a table of like uh, snow clearing information, you know. So to show the value of this information to the city, we really want to be concrete. And that starts by asking questions 
then taking a look at what's out there. What's the city doing? What are other cities doing? What are developers in the city doing? How can we improve on what's been done? How can we get a solution noticed? Because if we build the greatest web app in the world around city data, but nobody uses it, it we might, might as well have never created it. How do we recruit more people to come to our hackathons, build more apps, uh, and push this on the city's uh, desk? And then obviously iterate, iterate, iterate. So a few questions we've asked in the last year. Uh, it's only been up for a year, and, and I think we've, we've done a fair amount. Here are a few questions that I'll go through with the actual apps behind them. So it's, quelles restaurants sont propres? Uh, which restaurants are clean? Quelles restaurants sont ouverts? Uh, which hockey rinks are open? Où sont les chantiers de construction? Uh, where is there road construction? <laughs> Everywhere is not an acceptable answer. <laughs> 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 How do you balance the budget, uh, and uh, what are my elected officials doing with my with my money? Oh. I know with, with their time, with our time. Um, first one: uh, the which restaurants are clean? So the city of Montreal publishes fines that are given to restaurants, des panneaux, and uh, des supermarchés. Uh, this is in contrast to other cities, uh, which actually publish not just the fines, but they also publish when an inspection happens and if the restaurant passes or gets a warning or fails, in which case they get a fine. In Montreal and in Quebec, the only thing we publish are fines. Now, so that's not really an open data problem, that's actually like an access to information problem, uh, which goes a bit beyond open data, um, we won't dive into. But the fines are online on the city's website, and you can look at one month at a time in a nice little table, uh, HTML table, uh, on a hidden page that's really hard to find. <laughs> so you can imagine how many people actually use this information. Um, so what we did, or it's not we, Montreal Bear, what we really do is we work with developers uh, to get the data in a more usable format. Um, so this is done by a, a developer uh, by the name of Jeff Wallace, who used to work at Evolving Web and is now in, in, uh, in he moved to uh, Vancouver. But basically we scrape the HTML tables, put them in our database, which is open. We have an API for the data that we've uh, scraped, so you guys can build, iterate on it, build an iPhone version, wherever you want. Um, we put it on Google Map mashup. I don't have internet, but you can click on these. They expand, and then you can get down to the actual restaurant level. Um, you have uh, just you know standard stuff, the latest finds, all this. And one thing that's interesting is uh, this site, because it's properly formatted, it's properly built. When you type in a restaurant name in Google, uh, the finds come up often higher than the actual restaurant. And <laughs> 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 not in flash. Not in flash. Yeah. So yeah, no restaurant about flash websites. Uh, and we're adding a bunch of features. Uh, one guy in the States, they did a similar app where if you check in with Foursquare, it'll actually send you an alert to give the That's the kind of stuff that we would like to add to these apps, but this is all volunteer work. So I, maybe I didn't mention that. All these apps that we're showing you today, with the exception of one, uh, have been volunteer work. So obviously we have lots of great ideas that we'd like to do. Manpower, manpower, or woman power, people power. Uh, so we're looking for, for volunteers. The next one, yeah, sorry, if I can ask a yeah, sorry, okay, next one, hockey rinks. Uh, for those of you who played hockey, there's hockey rinks outside uh, the city. Uh, it's in a PDF that has to be scraped with text, uh, with a code like this. Obviously, you know PDFs are, are not the most pleasant things to scrape. Uh, this is the original PDF. We basically scrape it, put it into a database. There's an API on that data as well. Uh, the mobile version of the site was voted as one of the five best in that pass. Um, <laughs> All of these uh, sites we're showing today were featured on the front page of all the papers. Uh, the most recent one was um, started at our hackathon in February. Uh, and it's the road construction in Quebec. Uh, basically, we scraped not only Montreal, but uh, the province of Quebec, where's the road construction, type of road construction, etc. Stéphane Guidouin. Guidouin? Sorry. Uh, and uh, this has gotten in, in less than a month, we've had over 45,000 people on the site. Um, so you got a call from the minister. Yeah, and you <laughs> had a flip the privilege of talking to Mr. Ahmad, the previous. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this has been up. It's Quebec information and Montreal information, which is cool because we're matching the two. Obviously, you don't care what kind of street you're driving on, you care about whether there's road construction. I sent you alerts, yeah, you punch in your, your trajectory, and um, it sends you alerts uh, if things change. These, this is the only one that was paid for. This was paid for by the Plateau of Mont Royal, the arrondissement. And for those of you who don't know, it's budgetplateau.com. You've got about two weeks left to submit your budget if you live in the Plateau. It's an interactive budget. You have to balance it to submit it. This plays two roles. It educates the population about 
the financial constraints that the arrondissement faces, and it empowers you. Or it's at several phase points of ease. It's like, okay, you think you're so smart, balance the budget, show us where you're going to cut. Um, and this is it's got it. Uh, we'll show you the stats. I'm going to jump over this. Uh, this is our latest app. It's not out yet. Um, this is about Que Fomes So we're trying to aggregate data around municipal elected officials. Municipal elections is only about 35% participation rate. Uh, we think that if you have a better idea of what your elected officials are doing, you might be more inclined to participate. There's HTML information, there's PDFs, there's Twitter feeds, Facebook, etc. So we're trying to aggregate all this information into one easy to use page. You put in your postal code to tell you who your uh, your uh, your uh, your conseiller is. And that's um, James McKinney that's working on it. Yeah. John's helping out. So he says we. He means yeah, he's sorry. helping out James McKinney. It's not more of the about. Uh, yeah. We're not taking responsibility for any of the wonderful software that's being created. Exactly. So James, we started the latest hackathon, and we hope that we can finish it this fall. Again, volunteer work. So uh, time. Uh, so you've got information, Twitter feeds, if they're mentioned in the press using uh, just like Google, uh, Google's uh, news uh, uh, API, uh, their bio, do they go to meetings? Uh, if so, what are they saying in the meetings? All the meetings are in PDF, so it's a bit tricky. Some stats quickly, uh, zone cones, these slides are about a week old. Um, 40,000, that's pretty much all 17,000, so obviously only applicable for about three months of the year. Uh, Resto net about 66,000 with 750,000 page views. Um, budget plateau, we've had about 500 budgets submitted. The plateau is about 100,000 uh, citizens, including kids and, and elderly. So it gives you an idea of the success. And Zone Cone made the front page of La Presse. Yeah, Zone Cone, front page of La Presse, Resto net, Petit Montréal were front page of uh, the Gazette. Uh, budget plateau was up there. Um, so the, that's the other advantage. So, you know, James McKinney, Jeff Wallace, Stéphane Guidouin, um, Ma, Ma uh, Parent here, uh, they're all getting a lot of press um, glory. Uh, for their very hard work. Uh, I think we'll probably stop it there just because of time constraints. Uh, two other apps, emitters, air emissions, crime in Oakland. We can't do this in Montreal if the data is not available. And we'll skip over the rest. Uh, sorry to talk too long. Um, and this is, yeah, how can you help? Uh, so there's four minutes left. We want to take questions. So if you have questions, that'd be really great. Um, but just can you put it back on the plate or something? There we go. Um, so just the one. One message I want to leave off with is um, the kind of work that Sylvain does and the kind of work that I've done with Bill Sawfield and the kind of work that John's been leading a lot of Moyo about, done a lot of the, the heavy lifting on the project. And the work that Yannick and I know Yannick most out of the out of the Python organizers. But that work is taking uh, taking the knowledge and, and skills that you have and then using the soft skills around them to really um, really help out in whatever way you're looking for. And, and so you guys have something wonderful, wonderful here with Python Montreal, and, uh, and there's already people that are going to make sure it continues. But that's you know that's a great uh, that's a great accomplishment um, for more than that. It's really being developer and people that care about open data that have yeah. What we didn't share is where the city's at now. The city's basically told us that they're going to create an open data policy, um, and they're going to launch a portal uh, in the fall. We've talked with uh, city officials on this. We've talked with lots of bureaucrats. And we've also talked to the elected officials. And it's because of us, it's because of the people, not us, the four of us, but because of the people that have come to our meetings and created these applications. And uh, and Ilsan feels a similar example, people having a real impact. So that's what I wanted to share is, is you do have responsibility. You know, it's kind of a spider man with great skills comes your responsibility. <laughs> but there, there is an opportunity to use the skills that we have to impact our local environment. And, and there's some really good examples here for that. Yep, for sure. I think we'll, we'll use our remaining time for, for any questions. Hopefully there's questions. Um, and, uh, yeah. I was going to say, I know the geodata is something more and more people are talking about. And I was at the uh, Conférence des utilisateurs d'Esprit, which is one of the largest purveyors of uh, closed format uh, geodata out there. And uh, Ville Célora actually presented uh, the interface that they're launching for all of their data together. Are you worried that some of the larger municipalities that might be trying to get on to the same uh, train might be a little stubborn when it comes to these things, and we've already invested money and uh, you know capital into this. Why should we be sharing this? Or you mean the the, the municipalities and governments are trying to sell their data as opposed to offering? Oh no, that they just spent uh, their own money to set up their own interface for a lot of these things. So they're saying, well, we already set up our interface, and then you know you turn the pieds un peu and say, well, why do we want to share this? You know, in another format. Well, Quebec, Quebec City is opening and has an open data group that's going to be promoting that. I've already talked to like officials there, I'm not sure. But do you mean that cities are developing their own like web apps and things like that? Oh, that's what you mean. Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, we can't change government overnight. We're, our message we're trying to convey is that we think um, government should really be concerned with publishing high quality data um, and potentially, you know, subsidizing.